Hi, ladies and gentlemen, hope you're doing well. This week, I have a simple question. When does it matter what a body without organs is? All of life is specifics. Generalities and grand courses and long-term events only exist as abstractions. For example, the time you spent at school is an abstraction to which you can only really refer when you've left it and you're looking back on it after the fact. The First World War, or as it was known at the time, the Great War, must have seemed infinite while it was happening, not just infinite in time because they couldn't tell how long it would go, but infinite in scope because the thing we call the First World War was four years long, or 126 million individual seconds, in which every decision from when a soldier was going to get a cup of coffee to which direction the soldiers were supposed to move according to a general's plan all contributed to the meaning, outcome, and events of the First World War. There's no moment of divine decision in which a cultural course is set. Despite what mass media figures will try desperately to convince you, these people will never stop trying to convince us that they have an expert, bird's eye view, and incredible hindsight about current events. They don't know anything more than we do. They know as much as you or me because they're individuals. You know, you look at the journalist who's writing the article about what's going to happen in the next 20 years, look closely at them, you know, go on the LinkedIn profile and go on the sort of the blog post. It's just some guy. Maybe the guy's educated, but it's still one human. The scope of that person's observational powers are equal to one human being the same as you or me. I know a person who recently wrote a book about the Fourth Industrial Revolution, a textbook for use in universities, you know, and I guarantee you this person is incapable of explaining anything to do with the Fourth Industrial Revolution if there is any such thing really going on. And you might sort of counter that, you might say, but it's a fact that we're relying on artificial intelligence and smart technology and so on, and that's fair enough. We're relying on it more and more, but artificial intelligence isn't really a thing that exists, because it's not intelligence. It's just, it's pure marketing, you know. It's not intelligent. I have reason to suspect it's not the path to some grand Jetsons future, because it's really just artificial pattern recognition. But this isn't really the point. This is just an exemplary quibble. The point is, don't trust large-scale narratives that only benefit the people telling you about them. Here's the truth about frameworks. If enough people act as though something is the case, it becomes the case. Even if that thing is comprised of trends that only benefit the person who made them up. Klaus Schwab, who's the person who's written this book about the Great Reset and who's talking about a restructuring of capitalism after COVID, which is a good idea in and of itself, you know, but a lot of people would have a lot to say about his ideas, and this isn't really the place for me to tackle them. The point is, he cannot tell you the next stage in social evolution. Life will develop despite him. It will develop non-linearly and granularly in individual particular moments. There won't be any reference to some grand king or grand strategist's made-up designs. Therefore, actually, before I go on, I should mention that you can find more about this in War and Peace in the first and the second epilogues where Tolstoy kind of ditches the story and goes on a rant about the particulars of history rather than the specifics. And yeah, before anyone says anything, I love this edition. This, oh, it must be 50 years old, as you can kind of see the pages are as thin as newspaper, they're double columned. You've got this nice cheap leather, and you can tell without even looking at it that it's using the royalty-free translation from 200 years back. Ah, uh, they really, they spared no expense in making it as cheap as possible. God, I love this edition. <laughs> uh, back to the point, anyway. All knowledge is technically functionally useless until its single specific moment arrives. And even then, most of that knowledge, or the tenets and the reasons underlying an idea, remain in the background, waiting in non-existence until they're created post facto by some abstracting academic. I mean, look at this. When are you ever going to need to know how to preserve food without freezing or canning? Well, you don't need to know if you live in the first world until your freezer stops working. 
Then, all of a sudden, something like this becomes very important. I should mention, by the way, I'm not some kind of prepper. I actually got this by accident. It just turned up in the mail one day, after I ordered a totally different book, and there was no return address, so I just thought, you know, this was pre-COVID, so I just thought, all right, well, it's not poisoned, I might as well just keep it. You never know, the fridge could just explode one day and leave us without any method of cooling our food, so hey, might come in handy. Anyway, the point is, the study of philosophy, to get back to our original question, the body without organs, the study of philosophy, as with any profession, is a lifetime of preparation for the sake of a single moment, but it is also a succession of singular moments, each of which is equally significant. So you could say then that any applied kind of knowledge or is the same as theoretical knowledge, you know, you take uh, soil studies and civil engineering. Most of your knowledge in soil studies won't be applied every day when, if you become a civil engineer, but at certain times it will be absolutely essential. This paradox of attention is what drives our most emotional moments. And I think that this is what our society is slowly coming to realize, and this is the world we're moving into. There are no narratives. Postmodernism was confusing, it was just all narratives at once. But the world has grown to fit the internet, and every particular can now be remembered if we want it to be. There's no narrative. It's just pure empiricism. We're being blasted with facts all the time. We have no way to interpret them because we can't trust one authority to be able to process all of this stuff. You know, you can remember everything, but there's no way to remember it. There's no narrative. And only now are we really coming to realize that there never was one. Only endless particulars. All that's changed is their style of preservation. Once they were rights, then they were stories and myths, then they were facts. Now, I'm not quite sure what they are. Impressions? Arguments? Maybe somebody else knows.